water is essential for life but good water is also essential for good health and most of the ailments of the humans are because of bad water and bad water causes problems in two ways one it may have bacterial contamination which can cause diseases and secondly the water may contain excessive amounts of elements such as fluoride and arsenic and fluorides are the 13th commonest element in the earth crust and that's why in everything we eat and drink it contains fluoride and there is a biological function of the fluoride element if one were to take optimum amounts of fluorides it lessens the incidence of dental caries as well as it decreases the incidence of osteoporosis but if you take excessive amount of fluoride it causes a disease called fluorosis which is widely prevalent in our country the latest survey from the government of india reveals that 275 districts out of the 640 in the country are affected by fluorosis there are 66 million people who are living in these areas who are at risk of contracting fluorosis and it is also 6 million people are crippled because of fluorosis fluoride is a bone seeking element and 96 99% of fluoride which is retained in the body remains in the skeleton that is bones first manifestation of skeletal fluorosis is the dental fluorosis so teeth lose their luster and then slowly they become whitish and also pigment gets deposited on the teeth and typical appearance of dental fluorosis is evident slowly this bones of the individual will accumulate more and more of fluoride restriction of the movements of the spine is the first evidence of skeletal fluorosis so one would be able to bend the neck turn the head and also bend over and then pick up things from the ground in the last stage of course the vertebral column gets affected and then osteophytes develop on the vertebral column and they press upon the spinal cord which lodges inside the vertebral column causing pressure on the nerves and spinal cord and this leads to paralysis so last stage of this fluorosis disease is neurological involvement causing crippling paralysis of the individuals and this ultimately leads to premature death we have to lessen the amount of excessive fluoride which is coming to humans from water they can have defluoridation plants set up in the households and which work on the alum no principle and then they lessen the amount of fluoride that uh, comes into the water second we have to contain the excessive amount of fluoride which is coming from foods this happens in the endemic villages around the country thirdly we got to improve the nutrition of the people particularly in rural areas and also they got to see that eat the foods which contain excessive amounts of calcium magnesium and vitamin c similarly one got to look around that what are the green leafy vegetables are there and they can be tested for their content in addition to that one got to think about increasing the calorie content of the diet especially of the growing children we were shocked to see that children as young as 1 or 2 years old were crippled when we studied the the fluoride content of their water supplies we were shocked to know that they were drinking water which contained 6 to 8 ppm of fluoride and also we found out that children were made to drink tea and which was prepared from water containing high amounts of fluoride tea itself is extremely rich in fluoride each cup of tea even when prepared from normal water gives you 1.5 to 2 mg of fluoride and 6 mg of fluoride a day is the upper limit of the normal so these children were given glass full of tea and sometimes they drink tea and go to bed and then this was the reason for that enormous amount of fluoride they were getting from food and tea and with poor nutrition they were developing severe forms of fluorosis at the time we checked up all the water sources in that village and all except only one source which is half kilometer away from the village had a normal fluoride content 
and that time we came to know that the fluorosis has become a problem in Nogon district and also in adjacent districts. We selected two villages, namely Niati and Eshoda Kumji, and where we selected 24 children and we investigated them in great detail. We checked the status of their nutrition by estimating the body mass index. And all the children were found to be malnourished. They were all fluorotic because their urine content of fluoride was extremely high. We checked in these two villages every source of water and then we seen that whether the source was good for drinking or and cooking. So in one village, we found out the 11 sources of water. Out of that, nine were not fit for drinking. Then we told the villagers that only those two good sources of water should be used for drinking and cooking in that entire village. Another village we tested the sources of water, but we found out that there was not a good source of water in that village. And in those situations, we provided them with defluoridating kits, which we developed at INREM. And then also we improved the nutrition of those children by providing them with locally available foods. We gave them amla, tilchikki, soya laddu, cashew tora powder, which is extremely rich in calcium, magnesium, and vitamin C. And we checked them periodically, repeated them at the end of one year and two years. And then we were surprised to find that most of the children, the, those who had these deformed limbs, have improved and some have become almost normal. And uh, investigations also proved that their serum levels of fluoride have decreased or almost become normal. And urinary fluoride levels too have come down. The studies in Miyat and Yasoda Kumji have proved that this fluorosis disease, which is a big menace in our country, can be contained and also the growing children with a good aggressive treatment almost become normal.